Good morning, Arthur Christian Church. Remember our three Sunday morning services, 8.30 prayer and praise, 9.45 Sunday school, and then at 11 o'clock our traditional worship service. We'd love to have you at any or all of our services. And when you come, be sure and bring a friend. We look forward to seeing you at Arthur Christian Church. And uh, I'm going to continue where we've been going in, in worship. I'm going to ask you to open up your Bibles, if you would. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. It's where we started as we went into this series. Jesus speaking to the woman at the well. And He says this, starting in verse 21. Would you stand with me and read this, John chapter 4, starting at verse 21. Jesus, Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation of, is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when true worshipers shall worship in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship. God is a spirit and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I just ask now that, God, You be here with us. God, I thank You for times of prayer, of times of praise. And, God, now at this time as we come to Your Word, God, I know there's power in Your Word. There's power in You and Your Holy Spirit, which is promised to be here with us now. And as this song, uh, the message of the song that was just sung to you, God, may it remind us, God, that, that we just want more and more of your revelation to us through your Spirit. God, draw us closer and closer to you. Be with us now, God. I ask for power to be in this message, not by my might, not by my strength, but by the power of the Holy Spirit in you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. John chapter 4 tonight, I'm not going to review where we've been, but we've been talking about worship. And I want to carry you through a story today uh, of biblical proportion. And I hate using just saying a story because in, in our words today when we hear stories, sometimes we, we think that it's got some, some false pieces to it. But no, if it's coming out of the Bible, it's exactly as it is. And so follow along with me. Uh, I'm going to read you a story starting in John chapter 4 as we talk about Jesus' experience where he goes and meets a lady at the well. Read along with me, if you would, starting at verse number 3. He left Judea and departed again into Galilee, and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he into the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me the drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria to him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, asketh drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water." The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou, living, hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us this well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water, that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and whom thou now hast is not thy husband, if thou sayest truly. 
The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say, In Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The woman said unto Him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When He is come, He will tell us all these things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am He. There's several things I want to bring out here. And I'm going to give you the shorter story. Because I carried our, our early service right on up till Sunday school hour. I might carry y'all to supper tonight and y'all would be upset with me. But there's some things that are just a must that we look at. First of all, it says Jesus must needs go to Samaria. In other words, remember that Jesus, although the Son of God, as He is on this earth in His earthly ministry, He is man, God in the flesh. And He was dependent to live just as you and I live, to be directed by the Father. You see, Jesus was led by the Spirit. And so there were times in His life in communication with the Father that, that the Spirit gives Him an unction. It gives Him something that says, this is what I want you to do next. It's kind of a leading, and Jesus followed that leading. Now, just a little background. As we were to look at things, if we were to go Old Testament history, we know that God chose His people, and they were divided into 12 tribes, what we know as Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. Well, in their living, and this would take several sermons to go through, in their living in different times of going to God and getting away from God and being displaced, part of the Jews ended up marrying outside of the twelve tribes. Now, there was a reason God told those specific individuals, no other time in history, but in the time of Israel, He told the twelve tribes to do not marry outside of exactly where you are. If you remember the reason, he says, they all follow other gods and it will pull you away from me, your God. That was the only time in biblical history we ever see anything like that. And people today still use it improperly. But that was Jesus, uh, excuse me, God speaking directly to Israel. And He told them, don't leave any of the twelve tribes because you twelve are focused on me as your God. And the other inhabitants of the world are focused on false gods. And so what happened in this time, we end up having some Jews in times of oppression, times they're moved, that ended up marrying some from Samaria. They became known as the Samaritans. They had a half Jewish heritage and a half Samaria heritage. And you know, the, 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 there are times of, of battling back and forth and the oppression, and it's time to rebuild the temple one day, and the Samaritans came and wanted to help Israel rebuild the temple. And they said, we don't want your help. All right, there's some reasons behind that. But anyway, that ended up taking the Samaritans that went to another place and built their own place of worship. So we have the temple. All of Old Testament would say you were to come to the temple or be facing the temple to be able to worship. But the Samaritans, they weren't welcomed there. So they had their own place to worship. And so when you see in this story um, that Jesus must needs go through to Samaria, the shortest route for where He was going was through Samaria. Samaria. But it was common for, for Jewish people not to go through Samaria because they didn't get along. The people didn't like each other. And so they would go around by the course of another 12 to 20 miles. But Jesus said He must needs go. And so He went through Samaria. You see, that's where the lady's question is coming from. How is it you, a Jew, are asking me for something to drink? But let's get on past that and understand now. Jesus comes to the well. He's by Himself, and it says it's the sixth hour. It is the hottest part of the day. Y'all feeling that yet? It's the hottest part of the day. You know, and He says to her who comes to the well, there's nobody else there, and there's a good reason for it. He says, give me to drink. Now let's talk about this for just a second. 
Here Jesus is, He's not supposed to be talking to a Samaritan anyway by culture standards. And here she is, she's coming at the hottest part of the day. Why in the world would she do that? Did she forget her water early? No, the truth is, because of her sins and the way that she has lived her life, she is scorned by her own community. She's talked about because she's had so many husbands and now lives with a man that's not her husband. She's ridiculed in so many ways. So she chooses to take the very thing she has to do every day, her job, her work for substance. They would have to make this trip at least five to eight times a day to go to the well and get water. They couldn't turn on the faucet and have Bell Arthur's finest. She goes at the hottest point of the day because nobody else would be there to bother her. And so here she is at the worst time in the world, the hottest point, and Jesus says, give me something to drink. And after they get past, you're not supposed to talk to me. Jesus says this in verse 10. If you knew the gift of God and who it was that saith to thee, give me the drink, thou would have asked of him and he would have given thee living water. What is this living water? You know, for clarity, if you would, real quickly, turn to John chapter 7, verse 37. John chapter 7, verse 37 through 39 says this. In the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. If you still don't get what that is, the great thing about Scripture is it will tell you. The very next verse in verse 39, But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So the living water Jesus is speaking to the woman of the well is talking about the Holy Spirit that was going to come upon all believers that you and I get to have today. He says, if you knew what it was I'm trying to give you, you would take it. But notice her response, verse 11, The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and this well is deep. From whence then hast thou this living water? Aren't you greater than our father Jacob, which gave us this well? At the very time Scripture is being t spoken of here, that well has been there for over a thousand years. You know today, that is the one site without a shadow of a doubt, there's no guessing about it, the one site completely known for sure that Jesus sat. It is still there today. You know something else? It still flows living water. All right? From that, I'll, I'll come back to that again. She says, well, how are you going to do this? Verse 13, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drink of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. You see, there was something special that Jesus was trying to give her. There's an encounter here. There's a conversation taking place. And then she, she says, uh, you know, uh, the next thing Jesus does is He cuts straight to the heart and He goes to her deepest, darkest secret in sin. He says, call your husband to come here with you. Now, for you and I, those words would have probably been different. But there would have been words. There would have been something that Jesus could have spoke directly to our bones about. She knew immediately, you got to be a prophet. You know, for years I was taught, and I think incorrectly, there's commentaries that would lead you this way, that the next thing that happens is, because she feels the pressure, she wants to turn the conversation somewhere else. And that's why she says something about worshiping on a mountain. I just don't think that's the case anymore. As I read and as I look at this more and more, here's what I think was happening there. She understands now, okay, we're, we're talking religion. I can see there's something about you as a prophet. So she goes to the very next thing which would come to mind when we're speaking about belief in religion. It's about church. Now, they didn't have church. They had temple. But they had the assembly of the, of the people coming together. And that's when she, she throws this question out. Well, you know, uh, you know uh, the, the Jews worship in Jerusalem, and we worship over here on the mountain. And one day a prophet will come and tell us which one is right. She's understood conflict. Let me tell you something else that she's understood. She knows some of the words of God from the Old Testament. This is a lady that probably goes to church of their day. 
She probably has been in their worship service because it's passed from one generation to the next. She's at this place. She understands some things. What I want you to see is she's had a religious experience. But she's still living deeply in sin. You see, she's had an encounter with religion, but she's not had an encounter with God. And that's the difference that is about to happen in this story. She gets to have an experience with Jesus. He carries her on to a conversation that it's not about the place. It doesn't matter if you're in Jerusalem. It doesn't matter if you're on the top of this mountain in Samaria. It doesn't matter if you're at Arthur Christian Church. It's not about place. He says, A time is coming and now is where true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit. The Father seeketh such to worship. You know, the woman says this in verse 25, The woman saith unto him, I know that the Messiah is going to come called the Christ. When He's come, He'll tell us these things. He'll give us the for sure. And what I want you to see in this next verse, Jesus says, I that speak unto thee am He. If you look in your Bibles, the He will be italicized. That means it's an additional word to give us meaning. The original interpretation would have stopped without the He. It would have just said, He that I speak unto thee am. You see, that's God. There's something that happens right then for her that we don't get an expansion upon. But this lady that has been ridiculed by her community, that won't even go around the other people, decides to work at the hottest part of the day in coming to the well, <coughs> something happens. Let's see what happens. If you'll turn with me now, go to verse 28. The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to them, Come see a man which told me all the things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. There's some things in there with the disciples I'm not going to go into today. But what I want you to see is this lady who has been ridiculed, not accepted by everybody else because of the sin of her life, when she has an encounter with Jesus, she leaves everything about the carnal, everything there is about the world and what she sees, and she runs back to the very people that ridicule her talking about Jesus Christ. You've got to come see this man that I have seen. You've got to come experience. You need to come talk. There's something special about him. <coughs> you know, the truth is, if we understand God's grace and His mercy, we should be running out the door every chance we get, everywhere we go, saying, you got to come see Jesus Christ. You see, church can end up just being this religious experience. They were having plenty of it, the Jews and the Samaritans, and they were missing the actual experience of being in the presence of God. You see, that's what worship is. Worship is in God's glory. It's as we're lost in His presence. We're in the presence of God. And we see that this change took place in her. And I want, to see the, I want you to see what else happened as, as she goes out and runs. Skip with me down to verse 39. And many of the Samaritans Samaritans of the city believed on him for the saying of the woman. Her testimony, it says, in which she testified. People just believed her. They didn't even believe a word. They didn't believe because of the experience with Jesus. They believed her who they had scorned in every way. That's how changed this lady was. She was on fire for Jesus Christ. It says they had to come see what it was she was testifying about. It says they believed because of her. Verse 40, So when the Samaritans were coming to him, they besought him that he would tarry with them. They said, Jesus, we want you to spend some time with us. And it says he did for two days. Then notice what happens next. Verse 42, And said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. <coughs> I want you, my hope for you, my prayer daily for you, 
is that you can experience Jesus Christ every day. Experience Him. Don't get in an organized religion. I can fight that best all day long, back and forth both ways. Throw labels out. Throw denominations out. There's one Jesus Christ in His church. Experience this living water in which ye shall never thirst again. That's His Spirit, and that's His promise to every believer. You see, that's what happens when we have an experience with Jesus. They came because of her experience, and then they got to experience the Savior as well. I don't want you to experience Jesus through me. That's only going to carry you so far. I want you to experience Jesus through you and Him meeting at the well. But I will tell you when that happens, Jesus is going to meet you right there. He's going to get to the deepest, darkest place you've ever had in your life. You remember Hebrews 4? It talks about God's Word and, and how it cuts right to the, to the bone and joint to divide asunder. In the next verse, I think it's verse 5, it says, or verse 6, that we're just laid open. You see, that's how it is when we go before Jesus. We're just laid open. But you know what? It's okay. Because Jesus says, I did not come to condemn. I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. But that's the place where we meet Him and where we experience Him. And when we experience His life-saving grace and love that even though I could be whatever it is in sin in my life, He has died for that. It's removed. He gave me His righteousness, and He took my sin. That's the Jesus Christ I know. You see... We have to experience Him. Jesus' disciples, they're lost. <laughs> I don't mean lost in salvation. They just ain't getting it together. They've been following Him. They don't understand what it is He's doing. They went to buy meat. They come back and they, they see Him talking to this woman, and, and this is what they do. They're like, what is He doing talking to that woman? Y'all know what I'm talking about. You've done that same thing. As a Jew talking to a Samaritan, we're not supposed to do that. They, they don't say anything, but they perceive something. Then they go to him and they say, hey, if you look in this same chapter, he says, hey, hey, Jesus, we brought you something to eat. And he says, I don't need your food. I, I have other food. I have spiritual food. They don't get it. You see, they're still living in the carnal mind. This lady has been going to church in the carnal mind over and over and over again. There's been no life-changing experience in her life until... She had an experience with Jesus. And from there, she ran to tell others about it. You know what they did? They came because of her testimony, and they experienced Jesus as well. I'm, I'm on a... What page is that song on, Kathy? There's a song, Blessed Assurance, 289. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing to you today. But I do, I want you to look, look at the message in this song. If, if you could put that up for me. Blessed Assurance, hymn number one, verse 289. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. Listen to the chorus of this. This is my story. You get that? It's your story. This is my story. This is my song, praising the Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising the Savior all the day long. Verse 2 says, perfect submission because our life has been changed. Perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my side. I can't wait for that day, but I know, God, it's in your hands. Angels descending bring from above an understanding. There's another world you're not seeing, a spiritual world. God in chapter 3 has been talking about the kingdom of God just before this very occurrence, and His disciples aren't getting it. 
It's all around you, but you can't see it. You see, when we live in the carnal, all we can do is live where we touch and we see. But there's so much more God has for you right where you are. Verse 3, perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior and happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness. This last one just gets me. Lost in His love. What a joy it is to just get lost in the love of God. But I don't want you to experience that through me. I could talk about it all day long. Have you been lost in His love? Where you just disappear from this world in with Him? You see, that's the worship that Jesus is speaking of. We're going to sing this song, and we're going to end service. But I can't help but think that um, God is speaking to somebody in some way. Some way. And I just ask you not to quench whatever that speaking is. Whether it is to give Him praise, whether you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you want to join this church. Maybe you just need prayer. I don't know. God knows and He's talking directly to you. But my heart for you is that you have such an experience with Jesus you can get lost in His love. Would you stand with me? If God's speaking to you as we sing, would you come forward as we sing together? All through